Are you responsible to repent individually? You, the person watching this right now, you. Are you responsible to repent, to confess your sin, to humble yourself so as to be cleansed from your unrighteousness? Or are you cleansed so as to come to a confession and repentance? That's the question being posed. And that's not the question they answer, obviously. Hear that. 36, and I'm going to start reading at verse 24. It says, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all the countries, and I will bring you into your own land. Verse 25, then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart also I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. <clears throat> so, Leighton Flowers, what, what is the order there? The <laughs> cleansing first before he gives you the new heart and the new spirit? So, <clears throat> Hey, will you read verse 25 one more time? Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols, will I cleanse you? Were you going to? Were, you're probably going to go to 26 here in a few moments, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Can I say one quick thing? You sure can. I don't know why I always ask for permission. <laughs> hey guys, can I say something? <laughs> no. The reason that Layton will not acknowledge Ezekiel 36. 24 through i don't know how far you're going to go paul so i won't say but i mean even if you just take ezekiel 36 24 25 he can't def- he, can- he cannot put free will in place of what that scripture says mm-hmm. it does not hold up it doesn't yeah that, that, yeah that's that's a good point and that's one of the things that we're also going to point out to the people that, that's listening pay attention to what Leighton flowers is proposing mm-hmm. and what he's clinging to he's clinging to what man can do Mm-hmm. The Calvinist says no, what God can do. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and that's a false dilemma. Um, false dichotomy is what can what can God do versus what can man do. Okay, so that's the false dilemma. It's either what can God do or what can man do. And so anybody who hears that, they go, oh, well, that's obvious. The Calvinist is saying what can God do, and that sounds better. That's more pious. Um, so it must be Calvinism. But we're not proposing it's either what can God do or what can man do. It is what has God decided to do and what responsibility has he given to man? Well, according to the scripture, he says, repent, humble yourself, and I will give you a new heart. Repent, remove the sins from your land, and I will make you alive. I will do these things if you do this. So that's that's what God can do. Can God give humanity responsibility? Yes or no? Yes, he can. Can God give man free will and the ability to respond, either positively or neg- negatively, to his commands? Of course he can. The Calvinists oftentimes, not all, but some Calvinists argue that God couldn't do that or he would have to give up his own sovereignty. If God gives man a free choice, a libertarianly free choice, then he couldn't be sovereign. Now, the problem with that uh, teaching is that even their own confessions, like the London Baptist Confession of Faith and the Westminster Confession of Faith, they affirm that Adam and Eve did have a liberty of the will by which they could have refrained from sin because they were not fallen. Okay, Their natures were not such that they would, uh, by necessity, had to reject the teaching of God and the instruction of God not to eat from the forbidden fruit. And so, according to the Westminster Confession and the London Baptist Confession of Faith, the Calvinist go-to confessions, uh, Adam and Eve had the liberty of the will. So, was God sovereign then? And this is where the Calvinist gets kind of in a quandary, as we learned in the, the debate down in Houston, because they can't, they can't affirm that, because all of a sudden, if they affirm the London Baptist Confession or the Westminster Confession with regard to the first humans, then all of a sudden God's lost his sovereignty, if indeed they have the liberty of the will where they could have refrained from or they could have chosen to sin freely. And so the whole concept or idea that God somehow loses his sovereignty or can't be sovereign if people have freedom of the will goes against and flies against even their own systematic and even their own confessions. And that's why you have a lot of times Calvinists becoming higher Calvinists and even more dogmatic Calvinists like the guys in Houston who therefore then try to reject their own confessions by saying, well, Adam and Eve really didn't have the liberty of the will either. In fact, their own choice to sin was also just as decreed by God as a sinner's choice to reject the gospel. And therefore, you have really no basis on which 
uh, to uh, blame man for sin because ultimately everything, including the very first sin of all times, Satan's sin to reject God, is accordance with God's divine decree, i.e. determined by God, decided by God, not by somebody outside of God. Um, and that's where you have this whole issue of the authorship of evil w- within the Calvinistic system and their, their whole appeal to mystery is how God cannot be considered the author of evil if indeed uh, this, this concept of divine decree, i.e. he has brought all things to pass, including evil thoughts, actions, and deeds of humanity and, and creation um, uh, within that system and that worldview. And that's what we're pushing back against. We're just simply saying we don't believe the Bible affords that mystery. We don't believe the Bible teaches that. We believe that the holiness of God is important enough to defend in the sense that we believe that God is separate from, that's what holy is, to be separate from, distinct from the, the wills of his creatures. And therefore, we are blameworthy because we are actually uh, responsible, able to respond. We're actually able to do this or to do that. We're able to humble ourselves and repent in light of his truth, or we're able to harden our heart rejecting his truth and grow callous to them. That's why the warnings are there. When you hear the voice of God, as Hebrews 3 and 4 says, don't harden your hearts, because if you do, you can eventually be grow calloused and hardened like the Israelites here in this time, um, and uh, the enemies will overtake you. Um, and that can happen to you just like it's happened to Israel in the past. So keep your eyes out uh, open for these kinds of things, because that's important for that warning.